Hi, my name is Nura Laird, and I'm on the faculty of the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism. And we often get asked the question about how somebody who cares about peace and justice in the world can help actualize that, can help to bring more love, hope, and positivity into our world. And the Sufi teaching on this is very specific, um, and that is that peace begins in our hearts, in our homes, and in our families. Many of us have gone to our, our Sheikh, Sidi Al Jamal, our Sufi Sheikh and guide, and asked him what we can do about all the strife and the conflict in the world. And over and over and over again, he tells us, bring peace to your home, bring peace to your family. And he tells us that the overall goal, his overall goal with teaching us is the hope and the vision that the flag of love, peace, and mercy will be flying over every home. Now, let me talk about this a little bit and unpack it so that you can come to the understanding that I've come to about how this really can contribute more love, hope, and positivity to our world. First of all, as you might know, I'm the chairperson of the Department of Spiritual Peacemaking at the University of Spiritual Healing and Sufism. So a all the work that we do is centered around peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our families, and then as best as we can, helping and praying that that ripples out to the world around us and to the world around that, to the larger world. Um, we teach many skills and tools to help people reconcile and make peace with others. As you've probably heard on these YouTubes before, our hearts get covered over with veils that come from living in this world, veils from our <clears throat> conditioning, veils from what happens to us when we're young, to our wounding. And these veils cover over our innate purity and goodness and our knowledge of love, in fact, of unconditional love. This knowledge was placed in us before we were ever born is a Sufi teaching and that the human heart was set up to know this love and to come to this world and to long to find it again, to reestablish it. So if we all got to the point where our veils were cleared enough, it doesn't have to be completely, but just enough so that we started to know the love and to really taste it and really begin to embody the love and the mercy towards others and begin to establish peace in our hearts so that our spirits are calm and not carrying a lot of inner conflict. If we all did this work that comes from spiritual practice, from the kind of healing that we Sufi healers practice, if we learn these things, not just cognitively in our minds, but in our hearts, and if we taught this to our children so that they knew these things innately, then we would really see the flag of love, mercy, peace, and justice flying over every home. And then there, if we did this, there would be no one in the world to make war to perpetuate conflicts. Um, what we find in our work at the university is a strong ripple effect from the work that we do, both individually, internally, and as a group. Um, we work towards peace internally with our homes and families. I have lots of stories about this. I'll just tell one of them. One of our master students was engaged in an inheritance conflict with her adult siblings um, over the inheritance from her parents when they were going to be dying. And one of her siblings was um, estranged from the family and hadn't spoken to most of the family members in seven or eight years. Now, in our class, we did a role play about this particular family conflict. 
And we did it all the way. We did a mediation and we did it all the way to the point of reconciliation. Now, as you can imagine, the people in the role play were classmates. They weren't these family members that I was referring to. And in fact, those family members had no idea what we were doing in class. However, about three weeks after we had done that role play, she emailed all of us to tell us that the sibling who had been completely estranged from everyone for seven or eight years had started coming over to her house, talking to her, having coffee with her, wanting to be with her. And that was already beginning to spread to other family members. So these are the kind of steps that begin to happen that if a person knows how to build upon them, lead to more peace, more harmony, and more love in the family. Now, how does this work when her family members had no idea what we were doing in class? Well, the premise for us is the same premise that's in modern physics. It's the unified field theory. This is the fact that we're all basically in one great gigantic energy field and something that happens in one corner of the field in one part of the world or one part of the universe has a ripple effect to other places in the world and in the universe. And there's been lots of studies and experiments, scientifically valid research on this with plants, with animals. They call it remote remote viewing, remote um, interactions. Um, you've, you're probably familiar with the book Messages from Water, the Japanese work that was done with inputting positive words and feelings and negative words and feelings into a water container and then looking at the molecules of water under an electron microscope. And when the molecules had positive input, they were organized as mandalas, they were completely symmetrical, beautiful and unbroken. And when the molecules had negative words and feelings input into the water, it's amazing, the book has pictures, it's called, again it's called Messages from Water. The negative impact made the molecules of water become broken, unorganized, chaotic and not symmetrical. Now think about it, our bodies are 80% water and a lot of life on the planet has a lot of water in it or other fluids and these things are impacted by the kinds of words that they're exposed to and the kinds of feelings and events they're exposed to and that impact can directly affect how we feel, it can affect our state and it can affect our physiology, our health. So there's all kinds of ripple effects and there can be ones that are near and ones that are far. And we find over and over again in our classes that when we do these role plays where we mediate a real life conflict either between two people or between a whole group within a family, there's an impact at a distance. Sometimes our students have family members that are located literally halfway across the world outside of the U.S. And some of these families are beginning to change in their structure and in their internal strife and conflict. And every time it happens, I'm completely amazed. And I really shouldn't be because I've seen it so much, but it always just feels like a miracle from God. I mean, it can be explained scientifically, but, you know, every time there's more peace and harmony in the world, especially when it's at a distance, it just feels so special.